Mike Canatero, also Mike Cans. He is a recording artist, an actor, and the co and the founder of 1010 Entertainment here in Toronto. Uh, he'll be speaking on artist branding. This is what he does uh, with 1010 Entertainment. He, of course, will be speaking much more about this. But just to give a bit of a preface, he uh, helps bring more exposure to artists because the organic ways of doing so have uh, have failed in this day and age because of how convoluted the space in, uh, in music has become. So he provides people with community, with the resources and the outreach necessary to grow their brand and to focus on the message that they try to get across as a musician. And he's done so well for himself um, along this process. I've learned a lot from him personally. He's taught me a lot about sales and uh, it's, it's definitely such a pleasure to close out our first inaugural World Toronto Conference um, with him. So Mike, the stage is all yours. If there are any questions, I will let you know, but um, you, you have the half hour. My man, Perfect. such a pleasure. Thank you, Anthony. Can you guys hear me? Just want to make sure like the levels are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All clear. Perfect, perfect. Anthony, just want to say, man, I really appreciate you giving me this platform and this opportunity just to kind of spread what uh, what I do. And, you know, just hopefully, you know, somebody can always just walk away with a little piece of information that, you know, could just walk away with something good, right? Just to help with their day to day life, help with their business, help with their brand, because I feel like everybody's creating a brand, right? So I want to thank Anthony. I want to thank Unit for everything that they're putting together. Hello, everybody. It's very nice to meet everybody here today. Um, again, I go by the name of Mike Cans. I am an artist. I am an entrepreneur. I'm 27 years old from Mississauga, which is right beside Toronto. Um, uh, just to tell you guys a little bit about myself. Honestly, I grew up in Mississauga. I knew from day one when I was watching people on TV, I was always like, mom, dad, like, I want to be an actor. I want to be a performer. I want to be an entertainer. It was like in my blood. It was like my calling that I knew this is what I was going to do on this planet and, you know, find other ways, of course, to spread the word, spread the message and really just help people out there in any way that I can by just through my own platform. So everything started for me as an actor. Um, you know, I went to school for film and television. I was luckily able to get, you know, a couple agents. I was able to book a few TV show roles, got a little role in there. I also got a commercial for Bell Media CFL commercial. Maybe you guys saw me in there. Who knows? And my biggest one that actually just came out this year, I booked a lead role featured in a featured film called Hostage that is actually available on Amazon Prime Canada, Tubi, YouTube, a lot of other big platforms. You can definitely check my page out if you're looking for a movie night and you want to check it out. Um, but I've also taken on my endeavors as a rapper, as I really saw the passion that I had for music. Music has always been something that moves me. Um, but being an actor and being a rapper, you know, being an artist in general, I'm able to intertwine both things. And I've seen them both be able to help me out from, you know, being on stage. Music has helped me got into those vibes and those moods that I needed to be in a performance and vice versa. Music has really uh, sorry, acting has helped me with my music to know when I got to get on stage, I got to, you know, get in front of a bunch of people like this and just speak. It's really made me very comfortable to be good with camera, to be good with crowds and really just kind of speak and be there. So this has been something that I've been working on since I was a kid. But seriously, over the last five years since I got out of college, I went to Sheridan for one year. I went to Seneca for two years for film and television for acting specifically. But throughout my period of time, I was always constantly in the background. You, can, you guys can see my studio here that I built up at home where I was just constantly working on my music. Luckily, I've been able to team up with a company called MT Music Group. Uh, Mike T, TJ, and Janssen, these guys are my core management team that have been managing me over the last three years, really helping me build my personal brand, build my business, build my content, build my music. And really, I can honestly say as a team, we've been able to achieve so much. Just to share a little bit besides the movie, I have been lucky to be awarded for a Best New Solo Artist 2021 from the city of Mississauga that they gave me um, just this past year. Thanks, Anthony. I really appreciate it. Um, we've been able to be putting out a lot of singles out each year, making sure every single quarter we're producing new music for everybody to hear. Music that I really want to focus on is, you know, personal development, helping people with mental health, because, you know, music is a very important thing. And if you have the right music, the right sounds, it can really elevate someone's energy. And that is one thing that I really want to do. That's my the deepest root of why I do what I do is I want to see people live their best life. I want to help young entrepreneurs, young artists, if you're creative in any sort from painting, photography, directing, it doesn't really matter. You know, being an artist, being a creative, you're an entrepreneur just as much. And that's really something that I really wanted to help a lot of people with. So that's actually kind of why I created my company, 1010 Entertainment, as you guys can see. 
This is the, the X. This is the logo. We got some merch. Um, but 1010's main focus of why I wanted to create it was I always thought back when I was a kid. You know, I started out, you know, nobody in my family, nobody in my friend circle, nobody around me that I could just ask for help. Hey, man, can you help me with my music? Can you help me with my acting? Can you help me with my branding, my marketing? Like I literally had nobody. So I had to do a lot of trial and errors and really had to figure out who are the people that are going to actually help me grow. So, you know, using social media is a great platform where I had to just find people, tried lost some money, wasted time, burnt a lot of energy, but I never look at those as failures. I really honestly look at those as moments that I learned that I got stronger. I got better. I got educated to know moving forward on who are the people I work with and what to look for in terms of those red flags or whatever, and people to, I can actually trust. So throughout those years, I just really thought I'm like, yo, there was nobody to help me. I was new to the industry, so I didn't understand how it worked or how it all functioned on the back end. So I had to go through it all myself. So I said, you know what? I remember when I was that little kid, you know, that had that dream, had that idea that I wanted to be that superstar or I wanted just to be that artist. So basically I told myself, you know what? I'm going to create a platform. I'm going to create a company that basically helps those little people, helps the up and coming artist, that young entrepreneur that's wanting to build their brand, wanting to build their presence, wanting to take a chance at this career, regardless if, again, you're an artist, you're an entrepreneur, same thing. I wanted to be there for that person and offer them a platform that focuses on education, where I mentor these artists through Zoom calls just like this, one-on-ones. We bring the community together because community is very important to me. That's one important thing because when you bring a bunch of people together that are like-minded individuals, you, you so happen to start becoming the people that you surround yourself with, right? So that's a very important key of I like to always keep us all connected regardless if it's in our WhatsApp chat or if it's just, you know, getting on a Zoom call once a month just to have everybody in one space. It's a different vibe. It's a different energy. And I hope everybody walks away with a great thing. And then also being there for them one-on-one making sure that I also dedicate some time to know as much as it's great to be a group, it's also good to really, you know, stand out and just kind of be with that person one-on-one and really focus in on their needs, their wants, and where they're trying to take their brand or where they're trying to grow in this music industry. So like I said, education, educating these people, because knowledge is powerful when you have it to create a lot of potential in your career. And sometimes it's good to just know, hey, I have a question, Mike, or hey, I want to bounce an idea off you. I'm there to really just help you guide you throughout that process. And if I don't know the answer, I'm going to be honest, but I know a lot of people in my network that I can at least go find that answer, come back to that artist or that entrepreneur and say, hey, this is how we can be able to actually help you. Here's the answer on how you can move forward. Community, like I said, bringing people together is a very important thing, just like Anthony's doing here with UNIT, bringing a bunch of great people together. And together, that's the power. Together, that's actually what's going to really you know, make the big things happen. Like I know we can all do so much on our own, but as a group, there's so much more and so much more potential that we can all do. And the third thing, of course, is the focus of branding and marketing, like actually giving them resources that they are going to be able to use that are legit, good pricing, because I tell artists like, this is what I use for myself. I've tested it. Go look at my page. Go look at our 1010 Instagram page where you can see all the other artists that we worked with. Check out their testimonials just so they can get that proof of concept that look, what we do works. What we're doing is real. These are resources that you're going to need because those are two things artists need. They need the education, the knowledge, but they also need the resources to actually market themselves, to actually get out there on social media because Instagram is the biggest platform I tell people to grow on. And I, again, we don't have to talk about Spotify or Apple Music. Those are just platforms that carry the catalog for artists. You know, for example, you got YouTube that carries our videos, Spotify, Apple Music carries the music, but then you got Google where it has all the articles, it has all the other different things that you're going to need. But Instagram is like the center hub. Instagram is the main platform that a lot of entrepreneurs do use because it's your storefront. You know, Instagram is your resume. It's basically when someone hits your page, are they going to be connected or are they not going to be connected? So it's really the page that actually is going to convert somebody first before anything else. Just like I tell people, when you're walking in a mall and you saw a storefront that wasn't appealing to the eye, look maybe a little messy, the colors weren't right, you're probably not going to want to walk inside to go actually look at the product or the service, whatever that they offer inside. But if the people on the outside knew that they had to draw you in first and get your attention, get your focus, just like maybe when you're walking in that aisle and you see that shirt or you see that product on the side, you're like, why is it pulling my attention? It's because it was designed just like it's a page. It's designed to grab your attention and hook you in to grab that, to grab that eye, right? So then when you come closer, you see the product. 
you start to touch it, you start to read the details, you start to see the pricing. And now you're starting to look deeper into what they have to offer. Just like when you're on someone's page, the page grabs my attention. Now I'm going to probably start diving deeper into your actual content, into what you actually have to offer. So it's a journey. It's an experience you want to take from the top to the very bottom, right? So I always tell people, what's the very first thing that everybody sees when they hit a page? It's the follower account. So what does that create? A sense of credibility. And credibility is what sells online. If you don't look credible, how can somebody that doesn't know you, not saying you're not worthy, not saying your product or your service is not good, but how can the person that doesn't know you have that form of trust, that connection with you before actually meeting you to actually want to reach out? Or maybe when you send them a DM to make the connection, how can they know that they feel trusted? And that's where it comes down to having that sense of credibility. To me, it doesn't matter if you have 5,000, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million followers, but we all know the fact that the number does represent a sense of credibility. And that's why you're seeing a lot of people on social media, on Instagram, really taking the advantage of growing, growing their platforms because it can create a lot of great business and a lot of great opportunities for your personal brand, right? So, but the most important thing to that is to actually have content, creating content that creates value, right? I know we all like to post pictures or little videos that you know make us look good. Of course, we're selling ourselves. But we also want to think about what is that person that's looking at our page or looking at our content? What are they walking away with? Are they walking away with just a little piece of value that walks them away with something? Could be just entertaining them, making them feel good, having a great day. Maybe you're actually educating them through whatever your business is. Because the second you start offering that little bit of free value, they feel like there's worth something there to stay and connect with that person. Because you could have the best product, you could have the best service in the world. But if you don't have that sense of people want to trust you and work with you, it doesn't matter about the product or service. It's you that you're selling first, right? So that's why you want to make someone feel that safety. Look, I'm that person you want to work with because I'll be honest, there's so many other people out there to do what I do, but how do I separate from them to say that I'm the best person to come work with, right? So it's actually a selling and showing all that is a, it's transferring emotion to make somebody feel comfortable, make someone feel safe, to give them your, their hard-earned money to you and your company, and you're gonna give them back that value of that product or that service or that time, whatever it is that you offer, to really build that brand because brands provide value. And the two things that I like to always talk about as an example of why building a brand is very important, well, think about it. Number one, let's look at Apple. I'm sure we all have Apple. I'm a huge Apple person. I have two iPhones, AirPods, you know, a MacBook, Apple Watch. So I know I, when I think of Apple, I don't think of just the iPhone. That's not what Apple is. Apple is a brand. They provide value. So when we think of Apple, we think of the iPhone. We think of the Apple Watch. We think of the Apple Music Services, the Apple TV. So what are we actually buying into? It's a lifestyle right? Apple knows there's an emotional connection that we all feel. So when I hold this phone in my hand, I feel successful. I feel good. I feel happy. It's a product that's so easy to use and accessible. It's user-friendly so that I know I can, you know, take a picture here and it's going to go straight to my laptop, you know, or I'm on my Apple watch and someone's calling me. It's already connected straight to my iPhone. It's that, it's that sense of emotional connection that people are creating to their brands. So it's a deeper thing that Apple, myself, and a lot of you are probably thinking about what is that deeper meaning to myself? What is my why? What is my mission? What's my vision statement of what I'm trying to do and trying to get across? And when you build a brand, you build that lifestyle, you're building a sense of community, that home and that bubble for people to come into your world, essentially, to believe in what you're doing, believing in everything that you have to offer. And then think about it. Now you start building community, you start building clients. For me, I start building a fan base. And with 1010, we're building a large community. You know, we've been able to help 150 people to date and really just help them on their brand, help them with their marketing and help them in any way that I can. I've had people just ask me, hey man, I've had writer's block. Has nothing to do with branding and marketing, but if he can get through that little hump, he's gonna become stronger and better and that's gonna help him better at his brand and everything that he stands for. So when we think of Apple, it's a lifestyle. It's a brand. They provide great value in their products and their services. And we actually all have emotional connections to it. Hence why sometimes a lot of us maybe can't walk away from our phone for one hour because we have that emotional connection that essentially we don't see. But Apple knew that they were creating that. Another one I like to use is Drake. 
right? I'm sure we all know Drake here. Drake is one of my biggest artists that I follow. And I'm sure we've all at some point heard the song Panda, right? You know, it was Panda, Panda, Panda. I got broads in Atlanta, right? So we've all heard that song on the radio. It was everywhere. So, but here's the thing. Whenever I was at a party, I really noticed, this is the power of branding, is they play, everybody was at a party and all I, hear, all I would hear is, hey, yo, play that song. Play Panda, play Panda, play Panda. And everyone will play Panda. We would turn up. That's great. But the second Drake dropped a new song, what did we say? Play that new Drake song. Play that new Drake song. Play that new Drake song. That is the power of a brand. We addressed the song or whatever it was as the artist, as the brand. And that is Drake. Panda, a lot of us thought it was another artist called Future. A lot of us were not actually connected to designer. We are connected to the song. We don't want to have people connected just to that song or just to that product or just to that service. They want to be connected back to the brand, which is for me, it's me. For all of you guys, it's your companies or your brands or your business, whatever it may be. So you want to really think about what is that connection I want to create to people, right? You want to have that current connection with them, have a sense of trust. They feel safe with you. And then eventually when they see your product or your service, they're going to start to want to buy into whatever you have going on. And that's the power of a brand. Now, I always like to tell people as well is how do you want to build a brand? You want to think about yourself. You're not trying to be somebody else. You just want to be who you are. Be real, be genuine. Because when you're doing that, people sense it. Let's all be honest. We know when someone's off. We know when someone's trying to act like they're not who they are. But when you just know who you are, you know your capabilities on how you look, how you are on the inside. Everything starts on the inside for me. You know, everything has to happen internally before it happens externally. So if I want to be confident, I can't wait for confidence out here. I got to be confident with myself. You know, the value is not out there. The value is always within me. And the value and the power is all within you as well. So you want to just really tap into who you are, know yourself. And some things that I just do is I reflect, I go for walks, I go for drives. I watch videos from mentors that really are in a place that I want to be. And I just learn from them. Right. And I write down on, on a piece of paper, all the different traits and stuff like that are me. And I start realizing who I am. And I start seeing those, the specifics, like, you know, I love Spider-Man. I love hockey, but I also like helping people. Right. I don't need, necessarily need to create a business around hockey and Spider-Man, but I know I like to help people and I'm going to find my area that I want to help people. And that's personal development, mental health, artists, entrepreneurs, creatives, building a brand, et cetera. Right. That was it for me. And once I found my niche, that's my dot. And I'm going to stay focused on that because I don't, I can't be pulled from all the external things. I need to stay focused on my mission and my vision. And that's something I tell all my artists to create your mission and your vision statement. In one sentence, say to yourself, what's my mission? And in one sentence, you write, what is your vision? Because it's so clear to what it is. That's how you know every move, every decision that you make. And also the team that's around you, you all know the end goal of where you're trying to go. There's no, uh, I want to be the biggest art artist because I want the girls or I want this. No, I want to be the biggest artist because I created impact. I change people's life. I actually help them. That's more valuable than anything else. All that other stuff is just a little bonus if it does happen. So finding yourself, and it's a never ending journey, but find yourself and that's where you're going to start to know. Also thinking about what is your value, Right. What is the value you offer? Again, it's not about the product and the service. It does a little bit, of course, but within you. What is the value that your brand, your business offers? Of course, over time, you can expand, you can change, you can adapt, but really try to find that dot, as we always say. What is your value and what you want to stand for? And it's an ongoing process. You don't need to have the answer tomorrow. It may not happen in two years, but as long as you're on that journey, that process to allow and be open to things that just come in, you will eventually find what your value is going to really be. And also knowing your purpose, knowing your why, right? What is your purpose on this planet? Are you here just to, you know, for me, am I here just to make a couple of great songs? No. My really goal is here to change the world by impacting people's lives in a more positive, loving way to see them succeed with their brand and with their business and just live their best life. And my vision is to help as many artists and entrepreneurs along the way by building their brands and marketing because the little guys never get a chance. And I want to be helping those little guys because I was once that little guy. Just always know your clients are probably you three or five years ago. You're helping someone skip over the failures that we had. All of that because you're giving them a service or a product or a value that's going to help them skip over the years that you learned because you're really charging them for the time that it took you 10 years to learn something and you're going to teach them in one month whatever the case may be. You're trying to find your value and know your purpose and remember your why. So when you wake up every day, you know why you're here, why you do what you do. So nobody can push you away from your goals or what you're trying to do. And once you find that, 
the last thing I'm going to do before I open the table for some questions is marketing it. Marketing, as much as you have a great brand value, for at least in my business, 20% is the brand and the content, which is the most important because that's what people are going to connect to and that's what people are going to stay for. The marketing is going to create the awareness to get their eyes and that on me. So we need to market it. We need to push it out there. And that's why at 1010, I find things through Instagram, running successful Facebook and Instagram ads, getting press and articles so that when people Google you, there's a sense of credibility. You need to market it. Brands provide value. Marketing creates awareness. But when you balance out those two perfectly, that's just going to be a cycle over time of compound interest over 365 days a year. Imagine what's going to happen in five years if you just stay consistent every little day. It's like going to the gym. The more you work out, the more those muscles get bigger and expand. Treat that just like your business. And if anybody's here in the crypto, which I know probably a lot of you are, it's the small little interest to know over time, it's going to grow. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Stay focused. Believe in what you want to believe in. Do the internal work because it starts in here. And when you have it in here, the outside will eventually just catch up and that will be your reality. Mike, thank you so much. That, uh, that in and of itself was a lot of value. So um, definitely so appreciative for you to be able to share that. And I really appreciate how you also make the, dis the distinction between branding and marketing. I feel like people um, pair those together and find them very synonymous with each other, but branding and marketing are critically different and uh, have very different approaches, very different outcomes. And, and from my experience with branding is that branding is more uh, of an inbound force. It's what are you making people feel? It's gravitating towards a symbol, towards an idea, towards a concept that people can embody and therefore feel like they're part of something uh, that's bigger than themselves. Whereas marketing is getting something out there, you know, promote your content, put your stuff out on your social media pages, be consistent with it. And I feel like those are two different um, uh, d different muscles, different motions that are being moved. Also, thank you so much for bringing it down to earth and grounding it in the fact that it's about purpose at the end of the day, your why. And I feel like this isn't always as clear for people when they're going on these personal growth journeys or just trying to find what their craft is, what they're passionate about, because what's most alluring sometimes at the forefront is just what's are just the externalities you know the money you could make the experiences um th that that are outside of you but really it all comes from from within and as as you've elucidated before i've been part of a lot of your tent and calls it's your uh, your outside experience is a manifestation of uh, uh of your internal values and your internal outlooks and beliefs and so forth so um there is lots to unpack unpack with with your talk there we do have a question from a scene who uh, says can you say that again brand provides value i like that phrase but missed the latter part so what was it that you were saying when you said brand provide value but dot 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 i'm just trying to go back on my thoughts because i was uh, i was just kind of going in on my thing uh, yes yeah, you're in so, your flow yeah so you always want to think about your brand actually provides value because you know that's really what you want people to be a part of, right? Like, for example, for me, I don't want people just to look at my brand and be like, oh, he's just another rapper. He's just another artist, you know, that wants to party, make turn up music, talk to girls, blah, 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 right? Like the typical stereotype of what people perceive as a rapper, as an artist in my industry. I want to show that there's more value behind being a part of the Mike Cans brand, being a behind the 1010 Entertainment brand. There's more value there. Just like when I said to think about Apple, Apple doesn't just sell the iPhone. Apple doesn't just sell the Apple TV or the Apple watch, right? They're selling a value that it makes you know you have something that is easier in your life now. This Apple watch, you know, could protect me if you have a heart attack. It buzzes to Apple to potentially save your life. It tracks your steps. It connects to your phone to know that if you get a text or a call, you're going to get it on here. Or I have this great device of my phone that my whole business is runoff of. I don't need to be in an office. As long as I have a Wi-Fi or data connection, this phone provides me the value to run my business. So it's not just a beautiful phone that I can text my mom on or text Anthony on about this meeting. It was actually something of a value that actually runs everything for me. And it was an emotional connection that Apple knows that they're creating because we know it's just an iPhone. It's, it's a materialistic thing, right? Because when we leave this earth, that phone is not going to come with us. But one thing that's going to come with us is the value, that emotional connection that we knew Apple created something for me that helped me make my life easier, made my life better, and actually made my business go round. Because if Apple didn't create this great product or create the brand of Apple, 
I personally wouldn't have been able to create the business that I'm doing, right? And that's mm -hmm. vice versa for all of you. So really just think of your value, right? Brands are about creating image. What is the image that you want? And social media is a very strong platform if you use it correctly, because branding, like I said, provides the value. Branding is an image, like Anthony was saying. And also no, on social media, perception creates reality. You can show whatever you want to show. Sadly, people will perceive whatever you show. So put out there what you want people to think about, because what I see is going to make me think something. And the second I think something is going to make me feel something. And the second I feel something, I'm either connecting to you or I'm walking away. And you have a choice to create that experience of what you want your brand's value, your brand's uh, message to stand for, so that once they connect to you, or they're on your page or on your or connecting to your brand, what are they going to feel? So think mm -hmm. about what do you want someone to feel within your brand? Because that's an emotional connection that we're creating. For me, it's like my fans. I have people that engage with me daily, and then I have some people that just watch doesn't matter. I have an emotional connection with them and they're seeing the value that I offer in terms of my music to show them that my music is different from the rest. I'm here to create sounds that are uplifting, positive energy, because when they listen to that, it's going to make them feel good. Mm -hmm. And that's going to only connect them deeper to me. That's why all of the artists that we probably all listen to on repeat, it's not just about that song. It's about their message. It's about what they're expressing behind the music. What was the creation when they sat there with no beat, no lyrics, and they wrote that beautiful song from their life experience or from a thought that they had or from a feeling that they had. And they just created into this beautiful song, just like you guys want to create a product or a service that you felt that you wish you had. And now, you know, there's going to be people out there that are going to benefit from you. So really think about your brand provides value. What is the value in it? Yes, so truly. And, and, and we have Anchor, we have Vanessa here who are saying that it is an e it, it's an ecosystem that Apple is creating um, and selling. So it's not just the product itself. It's not just the next evolution or the next iteration of the iPhone or the, uh, the Apple Watch. And Vanessa is saying that it's very important that the message of how you make people feel then translates to the decision that is then made from that feeling. Um, and, and that's, and you have control over putting that decision out and you want it to be the truest and most authentic expression of yourself, because that's how you form the deepest, uh, and most meaningful relationships with your peers, with your fans, um, and how you build real community. Yeah. Uh, I was going to just, I was just going to quickly add to that is that if, if you could have the best product and service in the world, you could be the best artist in the world, but if you don't have the mindset or you're not a person that we like doesn't matter. My, my manager always says, Mike, I could teach you how to brand. I could teach you how to market. I could teach you how to make a hit song. I could teach you all this. But I, one thing I cannot teach you is your mindset and making you a likable person. Because if you do not make people feel that they can feel safe or cool or trusted or vibe with you, it doesn't matter. They'll skip over your service. And you'll wonder, why is my service not being sold? It's not the service. It's yourself. So work on yourself. Personal development every day. Read books. Watch videos connect with Anthony, connect with me, connect to the people around you that you're mentors, because we're all here to uplift each other. Because when we uplift each other, eventually that's going to start helping to know that we all can win. We can all be successful. Yeah. together. Exactly. And, and you've just iterated the concept of the stakeholder economy, where the wealth and the value is being distributed, but being distributed by everyone who partakes in it, whether you're a consumer, whether you're a producer, a provider, um, whether you're somewhere along that supply chain, you get to you get to ret retrieve the benefits that come from the value creation within that particular ecosystem. So let me relay this back to, um, to the music industry, for example, being that you're a recording artist and, and you do have some, uh, you know, some background knowledge on, on crypto and the token economy as a whole. What do you think would be beneficial or useful as a, as a use case for a musician to be able to develop their own token when it comes to being able to connect with their artist? Because now they have peer-to-peer -peer, um, and, and, and peer-to-consumer, uh, person-to-consumer uh, connection where they're able to sell their art, sell their crafts directly through these tokens. And it's like on the flip side, the consumer or the fan now gets a direct relationship, gets a token, you know, so to speak, to um, to their favorite artist. So, so how do you think that this is going to disrupt the industry and uh, and change the way that we work um, with music? Well, right off the bat, like you said, it's the connection. It creates another form of connection that's going to go into a deeper route with everybody between myself and my fan. But it also opens up another avenue for an artist that's already one of the hardest industries to make money in a sense where you're actually giving opportunities for artists to make an extra income that they probably weren't thinking about because they thought it was just the music. 
They didn't think that they're making money off of their brand, not just that one song. Right. Yeah. And when you make money off of a brand, you have so many more ways that you could go about it. And you guys are now opening up a path to give an artist an opportunity to get that extra income, but to also know that these fans and supporters can not only just give a like as a support or a stream for support or buy that one time ticket. It's an ongoing way that these supporters can actually support their favorite artists or brands or businesses or whatever it is. But not only do they get to support them financially, they both grow together at the same exactly. time. Exactly. I'm making money. They're making money. I'm happy. They're happy. When everyone's happy, to me, that's a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. And as you raise funds over time through the growth of your brand and your production, and as an artist, you would put funds back into your treasury, which gives your token real world value. And that would increase the value of everyone's token who everyone who who's a token holder, because the value of your yep. token goes up over time with that growth. So as you said, everyone gets to share um, and, and, and partake in that growth. And I think it's a really beautiful concept that's coming together. And it's, um, it's a learning experience ultimately right and it's it's all bound by the people that design it by the people that create it it's really cool to see this this new dynamic between uh fans now having the ability to connect right with their artists and not only as you said share a like or or or, or send a comment they're literally invested in their success and in turn they get to grow with them i, I think it's just absolutely remarkable i think definitely one thing that unit's doing i'm personally doing and i think everybody needs to do is just focus on building excuse me focus on building community yeah, that's what it's about. Yeah, it's bigger than the music. It's bigger than just, you know, the clothes you wear or whatever the case may be. You're building something bigger. And sometimes as entrepreneurs, which we all are in this call, we don't see it. You know, what's if it's bigger than we ever imagined? But if you just, if you dream big, because if you dream that's only going to be this high, you're capping yourself. Yeah. You might as well shoot for this. What was the saying go? You shoot for the stars and you land. No, no, you shoot for the moon or something. You, you, land, you land amongst the stars. So aim big yeah, there it is like why not right and bring people together along with your journey because you don't want to be the person crying in their lamborghini i'd rather be smiling in my toyota absolutely yeah happiness is, is what it's about at the end of the day. fulfillment happiness right and this is where real value comes together because we're humans at the end of the day right we want connection and uh and and, and we we evolve through connecting with other people through understanding ourselves through evolving uh in, in the most pure form and um it's, it's, it's incredible to see that we could continue talking about this, of course, but uh, I would like to share in the chat here is 1010entertainment.com. This is the website to 1010 Entertainment, of course. Mike, please share um, your yeah. socials or anywhere else that you'd like people to be directed to just to find you and your work and uh, any last insights you have about your community, please let us know. Honestly, if you're, I'll say this, um, because I feel like I've said a lot, is if you guys are an entrepreneur, artist, or creative that really wants to be a part of a supportive community, um, wants to grow their personal brand as an entrepreneur, wants to push themselves on social media and take really the leverage of what you have of that tool that's simply in front of you, please connect to me on my Instagram. I just put it there, Mike Cans. Check out our website, 1010 Entertainment, like Anthony did. And I love to work with you guys because the bigger our community, the more power we have to do bigger things. And, yeah. and I just want to say thank you, Unit. Thank you, Anthony. I really appreciate you, uh, brother, giving me this platform just to come on and speak. And I just really hope that at least one of the people in this call walked away with some sort of value that they can go home and just be like, Oh wow, that's gonna help me with my business. I'll never know. <laughs> I'm but. sure. I'm sure it. Uh, it was definitely more than one, my man. It. It really was. And I want to thank you for being here and uh, for closing out the inaugural World Toronto Forum with us here today. It's uh, been such an honor, such a pleasure, and you've done so much incredible work in supporting artists. We give our thanks to you. And on behalf of the artist community around the world, we just want to say thank you to people like you who are really rooting for the person. Who, uh, who wants to, to make a living at their craft. And uh, this is what's about at the end of the day. We wanna be able to, to live the fulfilling lifestyle style that we desire and that we deserve and you're helping people do so. So um, it's great to see us all come together here to see this collision of worlds. And uh, it's great to be able to have you represent the Toronto ecosystem, the Toronto economy through music and uh, through entrepreneurship as well as through acting. And as a final note, I will throw into our chat here. This is just for anyone who would like to be further involved in the unit community has our website along with our various other websites in regards to our initiatives. And those are conferences, masters, uh, ventures, university and news. You'll find all those on our website. And then here are our socials as well. 
And yes, Vanessa says, go artist. We need many to success. And that is what it's all about at the end of the day. Mike, thank you. I presume uh, you're taking a video or a picture. So here it is for you guys. Definitely this. <laughs> Perfect. Let's of close course. it out. 100%. But thank you thank so you much. Everybody. I really, really appreciate that. We all appreciate that. And um, my goodness, what a ride it's been today. I think there's still so much to, to digest. And I feel like, you know, a, a lot of these will be rewatched because they are recorded and will be posted on YouTube. So we'll definitely be notifying the speakers when that occurs. Uh, thank you to our community. Thank you to our team for curating this, for putting this together and being involved in the entirety of the process. It wouldn't be what it is if it weren't for the people that make it up. So um, have an absolute wonderful holiday. Be as safe as you can and, while yeah. also cherishing the, uh, the sanctity of, of family. So much yes. love to you all. We will all be in contact. Thank you again so much. And, uh, and Mike, thank you. My goodness, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure.